And today's topic is really um, non-pharmacological approaches to pain. So in general view, the approach to pain can be many ways. Well, number one, you start with the physical exam, taking history, and understanding where the pain issue might be coming from. Two, then you address, of course, the chai chi. You start with medications. What do I give to them? Then what do you do afterwards? If when you have, once you've got them all on meds, you've got them on going and everything, what is the next step? Well, the next step could be rehabilitation medicine. You could send them to physical therapy to focus on restoring their function. You could do um, care for musculoskeletal dysfunctions, to get, whether it might be because they're having some kind of radicular pain. It could be tendonitis. It might not be related to their original need for the treatment of pain. You can do neuro rehabilitation if they have a spinal cord, they have a TBI, CVA, MS. So basically you could approach doing some kind of rehabilitation in getting there some quality of function to decrease their impairment, to maintain their uh, ability to care for themselves independently. So those would be the goals if you decide to also address the rehabilitation issue with the patient along with their standard pain medications and pain management in that way. The other reason, another goal that we could do, look at is why we do blocks. When would you think you would need to send somebody to, to have an injection? So you have them on medication, so you have them on physical therapy, you're getting them some conditioning, you're getting them some kind of quality, and, but they're still having a lot of pain. So in, in short, a nerve block can be used to have a safe, most of the time, rapid relief of pain most of the time. Remember, nothing is 100%. Some of the interventional approaches that we could use is trigger points, which is simple that you could do at bedside, you could do at home. You know, it's something very simple that can be done. Even an occipital nerve block, an occipital nerve um, block can be done very easily at bedside, can be do, done at a home visit. These are pretty easy. But however, the, like the stellar ganglion block, should they have an RSD kind of a symptoms, it's more appropriate to do under fluoroscopic approach. Suprascapular nerve block, it's two ways. It's most likely the, uh, the safest way is to do it under fluoroscopic view, but it can be done at bedside as well. You know, at the epidurals, the lumbar blocks, the genitive femoral or the ilianguinal nerve blocks, and meralgia parasitica. These are some of the blocks that we can talk about is um, basically used as a sympathetic block. One of the sympathetic block is this very simple one, which is called the sphenopleptine ganglion, which we can block very easily through going intranostral, and that also can be done at the bedside, and is usually good for atypical headaches that the patient might be having. Migraine-like, but they don't really fit a migraine. They're not cranium continuum, but they're atypical in nature. That might be an option to be able to do for a patient. It's very easy, has very little, except that you have to be careful when you do it on, at bedside. Um, basically, if I take an example of Dr. Seiler, the pair, you're going through an intranasal approach, so you have the head slightly flexed, and you have the catheter through the nose. Not a needle, but a catheter through the nose, and then you're slowly injecting through it. The, one of the effects is that some of the local will drip behind the throat and then numb the area out, so you have to be careful on that they can really eat or swallow or drink something for a period of about three to four hours if you're giving them whatever anesthetic you, you're injecting through it, because then, then they can aspirate. But it's pretty very easy to do. Um, then you have, of course, your celiac plexus uh, block, which is mainly very beneficial, and there's been many studies out, for uh, pain resulted of pancreatic cancer. And that really does make a big difference, and they do have a better quality of 
pain control and at least quality of life afterwards with a celiac plexus block. It's best done in a patient who has pancreatic cancer with pain is when they're clinically stable. So the quicker, the better. Delaying a block like this, because one of the biggest risks you worry about is bleeding. You're close to the area, so if they have an uh, advanced stage of pancreatic cancer and their PT, PTT, INR, platelet counts, they're all off, it's going to be very difficult and contraindicated to do a celiac plexus block. But you catch them earlier on, they will definitely get a good benefit and relief of pain. The other one is we do commonly is the lumbar sympathetic block. It mainly addresses the crips or neuropathic pain-like symptoms of the lower extremities. The other for chronic pelvic pain, sometimes interstitial cystitis patients with urgency of frequencies can respond to a superior hypogastric block. Of course, the ganglion impar block is also very good for especially for any kind of pain that is in the rectal, uh, intestinal, pelvic region. Again, it's imperative to catch them prior to the mass. It's large to prior to the involvement of the whole area. So some of these blocks are better attained pain relief if it's done earlier in the stage of their disease than later. Yes. Yes, absolutely. 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 The occipital nerve block, remember we have the greater and the lesser occipital nerve. So the one at the bedside, which is the most easiest one that we could do for mainly headaches, is the occipital greater one right here. This is the midline, right? The cervical spine. This is the occipital notch. You palpate, and you basically imagine the lines going this way. You can enter right there through the needle and fan, in a fanning manner spread out the medication. Even if you deposit the medication in this region, you can then palpate and let it spread going up. Then you can turn slightly down this way to catch the lesser arm which is a pretty easy way to do it. It's easy. You feel the notch at the back of the head, which is right around here. You bend the head forward, flex the head, clear the hair, and you can feel the notch, and it's easily done, and they can get an immediate relief if they're having a severe headache. That can be stemming from that point.